Hi friends, it's Veronica Wax, naturopathic physician, happily retired. Today we will continue our conversation about eight common causes of acid reflux. And this video is number two. So let's briefly review them. Number one, swallowing big pieces, two, eating too much, overstimulation of sympathetic system, understimulation of parasympathetic system, dilution of hydrochloric acid, dilution, um, oh, excuse me, five, underproduction of hydrochloric acid, six is dilution of hydrochloric acid, seven, problems in the small intestine, and eight, food sensitivities. Now, let's go to the blackboard and uh, talk in details about those problems. As always, I already pre-draw for us a picture of digestive tract. Here is the mouse with the teeth, esophagus and low esophageal sphincter. This is the stomach. This is pylorus. Liver will drain here into small intestine. P stays for pancreas, will produce pancreatic juices here in the small intestine. So problem number one is we swallow big pieces of food pieces of pieces of food. That's how it's happened. So you, you eat big piece of uh, food, don't chew it appropriately. It arrives here, big piece, it arrives here. And what happened, you physically start to stretch your stomach in a different directions. Stretching the stomach means that you will stretch your low esophageal sphincter. Low esophageal sphincter is the muscle. When you stretch it too much, then content of the stomach will go up here into esophagus and create acid reflux. Problem number two, eating too much food. When you eat too much food, again, food drops here, stretches your stomach, that's uh, one piece. The second piece uh, stretches your stomach and so you stretch low esophageal sphincter. So that's one piece. The second piece, when you eat too much food, means that you have to produce a lot of hydrochloric acid, HCL, in order to break down this, this food in the stomach. And many stomachs cannot produce too much. So problem number three, is overstimulation of sympathetic, sympathetic, uh, sympathetic system. You already know that production of digestive juices in our body is controlled by the brain. So if this is your brain, it has two systems. One is sympathetic, and the other is parasympathetic, parasympathetic. Sympathetic system runs along the digestive tract. And when it's activated, it shuts down the production of hydrochloric acid, production of mucus here in the stomach. It shuts down the production of the bile, production of pancreatic enzymes, and also enzymes here in the small intestine that lives in the brush border. As a result, when you eat and sympathetic system get activated, you don't produce digestive food, uh, juices. Food will stay here for a long period of time. And eventually, a little of the, uh, the hydrochloric acid and food that stays here may go into your esophagus and will create acid reflux. Problem number four is um, understimulation of parasympathetic, parasympathetic system. When you don't stimulate parasympathetic system and the parasympathetic system gets stimulated only when you start to prepare food, it takes about 20 minutes what that means when you stimulate, you look at the food, you chop the food, you smell of the food, and that's the time when you start to stimulate production of hydrochloric acid, you start to stimulate production of the mucus to protect the lining of digestive tract from the damaging effect of hydrochloric acid. You will start to produce bile, 
you will start to produce pancreatic enzymes. When you do all of that, you prepare your digestive tract. Producing of hydrochloric acid means that you create a certain pH in the stomach, which is too very acidic. Production of bile juices, pancreatic juices, brush border enzymes here means that you will create a specific environment with pH of seven here in the small intestine. Food will get digested here. Pilarus will get open. Food will move out of here into right environment and will get digested in the small intestine. Problem number five low production of hydrochloric acid, HCl stays for hydrochloric acid. Often, for unknown reasons to physicians, people may produce less than they suppose of hydrochloric acid. As a result, food will stay here in the stomach undigested. As a result, it will, it will stay here more than one hour, 30 minutes. It has higher chance because stomach will be churning high chance to go into esophagus and will create acid reflex. Problem number six, dilution. Dilution of hydrochloric acid. This is the case when, when you eat and drink a lot of water. Here is the glass of water. This is the water. You drink a lot of water. Oh, it could be juice. It could be um, a wine, it could be a lot of beer or just tea. As a result, you put all of that fluid here into your stomach. You pump hydrochloric acid into the stomach. This hydrochloric acid gets diluted. You do not create, create pH of two. That pH is not created. As a result, pilarus is not open because pilarus opens on concentration gradient pH 2 here, pH 7 here. You don't have adequate pH. As a result, it remains closed. Food stays here with the water, with hydrochloric acid. It has a higher chance to go here into your esophagus and create acid reflex. Problem number seven is problems in the small intestine. Problems in small intestine. And by the way, I have on each topic here that I'm talking additional videos on my YouTube channel. So problems in the small intestine could be created by liver that drains here into small intestine, by pancreas that drains here in the small intestine, brush border enzymes that live in the small intestine. Also, we have a lot of different bacteria that live here in the small intestine that help us to digest food and they have us to assimilate and create a right environment here in the small intestine so we can digest food and eventually can absorb. If any part of this is not working correctly, does not you have a, a person may have a functional deficiency of pancreatic enzymes, uh, bile, or bacteria that lives here in the small intestine get killed by antibiotic. So you have a problem number seven. Finally, problem number eight, food sensitivity. Food sensitivity. And the food sensitivity is often explained on the uh, on the example of the dairy products, many people have a problem because they have lack of enzymes that will break dairy products such as milk, butter, ice cream here in the small intestine. As a result, dairy products are not broken. They irritate the small intestine. Person will complain about gas, bloating, bloated abdomen. It means the digestive tract is irritated here. Irritation means inflammation. Eventually, inflammation will make its way into the stomach. And by the way, you do not create, when you have inflammation here, you do not create right environment in the small intestine, which is pH 7, which is also will contribute. Pilarus is not going to be open. Food will stay here in the, small, in the stomach. We will create more inflammation in the, in the stomach here. Inflammation eventually moves here into esophagus and creates problems there. 
So guys, I hope that I explained to you all of that and you understand. And please ask me questions here on my channel. In the next video, which is going to be part three, I will talk about how to deal with all of those problems. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Like, subscribe. It's Dr. Veronica Happel, retired. Bye-bye for now.